Hello everybody, Karen here from tempestcolor.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. Uh, this is today's project. Uh, it's a little uh, four ounce espresso coffee cup and inside uh, I've got some, uh, some instant hot chocolate and some uh, stuff to make yourself a lovely warm winter's drink. And at the back of the, uh, the holder, there is a space where you can put an envelope which contains a gift card. So uh, this is what I'm going to be doing today, so stay with me and I will show you how I made it. So here's what I'm going to be using today. I've got a piece of cherry cobbler card which is 3 inches by 10 and a half inches and I've got another piece of cherry cobbler card which is 5 inches square. I've got a piece of the uh, This Christmas DSP and I've cut that to 2 and 3 quarters by 3 and a half inches. Uh, and I've got another piece which is going to be for my envelope. It's a different pattern but it's from the same set uh, and this piece is five and a half inches square. Uh, I've also got uh, another piece from the uh, from the same stack which is a, uh, an off-cut piece which is the bit I'm going to use to uh, to cut the car the cup cover out of. I can't think what it was called then. I've got a scrap of very vanilla and I'm also going to be using some scraps of uh, real red, uh, sorry, not real red, cherry cobbler, uh, and possibly garden green. I'm just going to see how that goes. I've got my envelope punch board, of course. I'm going to be using the Merry Tags framelits and I'm also going to be using the Layering Circles framelits. The stamps I'm going to be using today come from this set, the Balloon Celebration set, and I'm going to be using my Cherry Cobbler and Garden Green uh, Stampin', Mar Stampin Right markers. As well as all of that, I'm going to be using the uh, Mini Jingle Bells, and I'm going to be using the Trio of Baker's Twine. Going to begin by scoring my long piece of card at three inches and at six and three quarter inches. Um, and now I'm going the piece that's five inches square. I'm going to score at half an inch and one inch on all four sides. Half an inch. I don't know why this is behaving today. I've burnished the folds and I'm going to go and cut away the pieces that I don't need. Now I don't need these three squares in this corner here. I don't need any of those. So I'm going to cut those away. And I'm going to release this flap, so I'm just going to cut up to there. And I'm going to take little slivers out of these edges. And bigger slivers. I'm going to cut away a triangle at the corner for these pieces. Alright, so it's looking like that. And I'm going to go and do that on the other three edges. I have that shape. I'm going to die cut the hole for the cup now and to help me find where the centre is I've marked from corner to corner in pencil and this is going to be the, the reverse, it's going to be the inside, nobody's going to see this. Now if you've got, uh, you're good at judging things and you don't need to do that by all means it's not essential, it's just that I find trouble um, doing things by eye so I need measurement to help me. And I'm going to select a, a die that the cup will fit through and I haven't decided yet which of these cups I'm going to use. I think I'm probably going to use the black one, I don't know. Um, so this is the next size down so as you can see that won't fit through and that one will 
but it won't go up terribly far. So this is the right size die to use. So I'm going to centre that onto my base piece and I'm going to take it over to the Sizzix and cut it out. And while I'm there, I'm going to take this die, which is from the Merry Tags uh, set, and I'm going to use a scrap of Cherry Cobbler and I'm going to cut that piece out as well. So I shall be right back. Now I'm going to put the base together. So I have my Fast Fuse and I'm just going to put some of that on the four tabs, like that. And as always with Fuse, it's a light touch and a quick flick. Could be a song, couldn't it? A light touch and a quick flick. Maybe not. <laughs> Perhaps not. Okay. So I'm just bringing in, matching up those edges and just pressing them gently into the Fuse. And there's my cup holder base. If I bring back the uh, the backer part, I've put the adhesive on to the backer, and I'm going to run a strip of fuse, uh, not fuse, a strip of tear and tape along one edge of my cup holder. Okay, and you'll see why in a moment. So now I'm going to remove or part remove the backing from my tape and by doing this you give yourself a little bit of wiggle room so that if it doesn't go down in the right space first time you've got you've got time to change your mind which with me it's always a good thing It up and fold it out. All right, now that needs to be facing that. All right, so don't make sure that isn't on any edge other than the um, the, the, the back edge. I'm trying to I'm trying to craft and, and talk at the same time, and it's never a good idea. Not for me. Okay, so that. I think is in about the right place so I can take the backing strips away and press that down. Right, sorry about that, phone rang. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the backer off, the backing off this piece of tape and I'm going to fold this backer piece over and up and there it is, and I've got a space to slot. When I was looking for a source for these cups, um, what I searched for was four ounce disposable espresso cups, because this is what they are. And I found these at Amazon, I found two different kinds. Um, this was the kind I found first, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's white. This sort didn't come with the lids, I had to buy the lids separately. Uh, and after I found these and ordered them, I came across these, which come with the lids. So um, you pay your money and you take your choice. They're both four ounce cups. This one is uh, is slightly fatter than that one. This one is slightly taller. And it's it's personal preference. It's entirely up to you which you use or which you can even get hold of. I did get the white ones because I thought you could do probably do something with um, with vellum with these. It would be very pretty. So uh, that's another idea that I've got on the back burner. But today I think I'm going to work with this one because this one, uh, because the top of it is more like the top that you get in places like Starbucks and Costas and other coffee shops are available. So this is the one that I'm going to be working with today. Now to cover it I, I sacrificed one of them because they came in a pack of many more than, than I, I'm actually going to need for this project. Uh, I sacrificed one of them and I just cut off the top and the bottom and pulled it apart from the uh, from the ridged piece and I got a shape like that and that is what I'm going to keep and I'm going to use as my template. So I'm going to fast forward you through this bit because it, it's um, you know you can you can probably work this out for yourself. So I had a piece of my the DSP that I was going to be using. Uh, this piece is actually slightly too small. 
uh, and I put my template on the top of it, I traced around it, I added a little bit extra for uh, an overlap at the end and this is what I finished up with. So now I'm going to apply that to my cup and to do that I'm going to put a little bit of tape onto the cup itself just to hold things where I want them to be and to stop it flopping around. Come on. Now because it's a ridged surface it's making it difficult for me to get hold of a of an end to start it. There we go. Alright, so I've got that all of that going on. And uh, okay, that is my my underlap piece. Alright, so I'm going to start around here. Bring that in. And I'm just going to wrap that round the little cup. And before I get to the end and make life difficult for myself, I'm going to put another piece of tape here. I'll use my scissors this time. And again, remove the backer. And this is how easy it's going to be. Rub that down with my finger and my cap is all festive. I'm using the Baker's Twine which is in the trio pack in the uh, in the autumn winter catalogue the holiday catalogue and I've threaded three of the mini Jingle Bell embellishments onto it now uh, the way I did it uh, I could have used a needle uh, but what I actually did was I uh, rubbed some uh, PVA glue along oh, about an inch or so of the end of the baker's twine let it dry and then it dries quite stiff so that you can you can almost use it as a needle itself so I've strung three of them on there and I'm going to use them to, to tie a label on and I want to measure make sure that I've got enough and plenty of baker's twine and I think that will be around about enough there in and I'm going to tie them so that the three of them are clustered together. Okay, so I've got three little jingle bells in a cluster. My original idea was to have this uh, die cut kind of suspended from the top and hung on a piece of twine but I had, it just I couldn't make it work that way it just wasn't it just wasn't happening for me so what I'm going to do instead I'm going to stick it down to the front so I'm going to cut away the loop at the top very carefully okay and this is why they say there are no mistakes in craft there are only changes of design direction sit still you cup wants to uh, cup wants to play so I'm going to put a few glue dots at strategic points on the back of these pieces. I'm going to put one on the, the pine trees there, just to you know, just to encourage encourage it to stick down. I think I will need another one there. Um, could have used wet glue. Could probably have used snail. Although on a curved surface that might not have been a brilliant idea. All right, so now I'm going to adhere this, slip that up underneath there. I'm going to adhere this to the front of the cup. Whoops, see that one stuck to my thumb. Didn't want that to happen. We'll fix that. Okay, so as you can see, that one's broken away there we will fix that and we will resort I think to a little bit of the wet glue a little bit of the adhesive 
come on you can there you go just a little spot and in these areas here where it's sticking up because I'm trying to stick uh, a flat piece of card to a curved piece which is never a happy combination I'm just going to stick those down as well okay okay so I'm just going to hold that just for a few seconds while it sets there we go and that's near enough if I turn that so that it's at the back a bit more balanced a bit better doesn't it okay that's going to need a little bit more grip so we'll give that a few seconds and I've got an elastic band here so I'm going to hold that use that to hold it in place while it sets so while that's setting and before I tie the spoon onto uh, onto the cup I'm going to fill my little cup with the uh, with the treats that I've got so I've got some a um, couple of spoonfuls of instant hot chocolate in a bag it's the kind that you can add milk or water to I've got a little mini candy cane and I got that actually at the pound shop and uh, I did check the the use by date and there's plenty of time on it I've got uh, I think it's five mini marshmallows in there. I don't want too many. And I've got three little chocolate balls. Whoops! That's got a life of its own. Okay. Pop that on and put the lid back into place. All right, now I'm going to attach the spoon at a at a jaunty angle and I'm going to use the elastic band to help keep everything in place and trust me if you're going to do this you need an elastic band because that spoon has got um, a life of its own and the other thing that I'm going to do my cluster of mini jingle bells here I'm going to um, I'm going to put a glue dot onto the back of that cluster has that come up yes it has just so that they stay where I want them to, which is front and centre. Okay. So, hang on, let's get the... I want the two at the top and one at the bottom, because I just think it looks better that way. Okay. And I'm going to wrap my baker's twine around my spoon, back round to the front, and I'm going to tie a bow and centre it. I want to centre it in the middle of those bells, those jingle bells. And maybe I'm being overly fussy about this, but I that's just the way I want it to be. So tie a knot. Probably not been overly generous with the, the with the baker's twine here, so and you know it's it's not that expensive, so there's no need to be really mean with it. Okay, I'm just going to do a bit of bow fettling here. It's a technical term. Pull that tight and snip away. The ends, and there you go, and I can remove the elastic band, and that now sits into the cup holder base, just like that. Time to do some stamping now with uh, the balloon celebration set, and I'm using Come Let Us Sit Together and Drink and Hot Chocolate. And I've already mounted them up onto my uh, my my clear block, uh, and I'm going to be using my stamp and write markers this time. I got the cherry cobbler one. Uh, now the ink in these is the same as the ink that is in our stamp pads. Absolutely the same ink, so you can mix and match. So I'm putting my cherry cobbler on the top there and 
some garden green along the, the hot chocolate wording and these are so useful and they are a cost-effective way of getting hold of um, all the various ink colours because you can use them for stamping as you can see or you can use them as markers for colouring in. Right now it's pretty juicy but just in case I'm just going to breathe on it and I'm going to press down and because these are silly, uh, these are poly photopolymer stamps I've got my silicone mat underneath and I'm going to give that a good time for the ink to transfer so I'm going to count one two three four five and there we are. I'm going to go away take one of my uh, layering circles dies and I'm going to cut that out and I'm also going to cut a piece of garden green with the next size up of scallop layering circles and I will be right back. And here we are so I'm just going to put some fast fuse onto my backer here. I've put fast fuse on my backing piece and I'm going to adhere that to my cup holder just like that Here's my front piece and I'm just going to line that with my phone over the top I want a little envelope for the gift card that's going to tuck inside my uh, my cup holder and uh, I've measured my gift card and it's two and a half inches by three and a half inches and so that I know what size I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this app on my phone uh, so on the long edge it's uh, three and a half inches and on the short edge it's two and a half inches okay and now I'm going to hit generate and this is a free app it's on Android and I believe it's on iPhone as well and it tells me that I want paper it needs to be five and a half inches square and I'm going to use the two and three eighths of an inch punch guide measurement okay so uh, I've already cut my paper and two and three eighths. I'm going to line up my edge, the edge of my paper with the two and three eighths mark and I'm just going to score the onboard score holder and this is where it's going to bounce so sorry about this and I'm going to match and I'm going to turn my um, oh turn my paper so that the line that I've made I don't know whether you can see it okay there it is is level with this little pointer here and I'm going to pinch again and I'm going to score again and I'm going to do that until I've been all the way around the paper okay. so you only have to measure once it's not easy to see and score okay. and now oops one more step and turn it round a nice finish. I'm going to round the corners because the punch board uh, is the punch's true purpose. It, one side is cuts you the, the little notch for your envelope and the other side is a corner rounder. Okay so I've got my gift card and I'm just going to put it into my envelope and I'm not going to do a lot of sticking down. I'm just going to put one little, little dot of snail there just to just to hold it for the time being because I'm going to take some lengths of and I'm going to go mad and I'm going to use all three colours the red, gold and the green of the um, of the trio of Baker's Twine so I'm going to cut a good long length here because you know it's Christmas why not put those out of the way so they don't oh, uh, 
gallop around all over the place. Okay, I'm just gonna tie a knot, make sure I've got all three edges together. And a bow, what do you think? Shall we? It could be a knot, but do you know what? Let's do a bow. And there we are. So again, I'm going to trim off the edges. Whoops. Cherry Cobbler wants to make an appearance. And that is a nice little present. Bring back my cup holder and that will slot inside there, just like that. And then that pops into uh, the front. Just neaten everything up a little bit and there it is. There it is finished and isn't it just so cute? Now uh, it would be a lovely little gift on its own even without the gift card uh, or a party favour. Um, you could fill the cup with sweets uh, if you were giving it, giving it to a child. I know when I was a little girl I loved having things that were child size. Um, and if you were giving it to an adult, well perhaps you could put small trinkets in there or a piece of jewellery would be an interesting way of uh, presenting something like that. So thank you very much for watching today and if you've been inspired to give this a try uh, then please do visit my Facebook page and leave me a picture of what you've done because I would love to see it. And there is a link below this video here and there's also a link to my blog where you'll find the measurements for this project and my online shop. And please don't forget to like, to share and to comment and to subscribe because I will be posting more tutorials soon and I very much hope to see you again. Bye bye.